this tutorial, we'll explore how to model stairs from a simple cube and render pavilion structures with a physical model effect in Blender. Let's start. First, open the Blender file. Ensure the Node Wrangler add-on is activated. We'll start by modeling a staircase from a cube object. Switch to the side view from the top right, select the cube, then change from object mode to edit mode. In the top left, select point mode. Merge all points using the M shortcut. Create the staircase cross section by extruding the point. Continue the staircase by copying. For easy movement, use the snap feature in the top section. Extrude using the E shortcut. Let's multiply the steps. Extrude the points, then select them in Edge Edit Mode using Alt. Create surfaces for open areas with the F shortcut. While there are multiple modeling methods, this approach is simpler. For example, we can model it this way as well. Name the object using the F2 shortcut. Now let's set up the scene. You'll find these objects in the link below. Let's copy and paste the pavilion structures from the file using Ctrl C and Ctrl V. Adjust the structure's directions and positions. Move objects using the G shortcut. For rotation, use the R shortcut and select the desired axis and right angle. Mirror with Ctrl M. Ensure the structure's face points towards the camera. Move objects using the G shortcut. Simply press the axis you wish to move along. Let's scale the stairs along the Y axis using the S shortcut. Position the structure atop the stairs. With the object selected, enter Edit Mode and use the 3 shortcut to select and extrude the front surface. To extend the structure's legs to the ground, select the object and enter Edit Mode. Change the mode in the top right. To select back points as well, use Ctrl B and move down the Z axis. Copy stairs to other structures using Ctrl C and Ctrl V. We've now learned basic Blender commands like Move, Rotate, Mirror, and Scale. Let's practice these while continuing to set up our scene. Let's proceed with arranging the scene using the techniques we've previously learned. In the modeling section, we learned about edit mode, object mode, and extrude commands. Next, we'll create a column beneath the structure. In edit mode, select the wood atop the structure using Ctrl L, then move it to another layer with the P shortcut. And let's name the object's layer using the F2 shortcut. Let's rotate the column and adjust its dimensions. To multiply the column, we'll use the array modifier in the modifier tab. This allows us to easily adjust the number of columns and their spacing. To breathe life into our scene, we'll add trees and human figures. You'll find cardboard textured objects in the link below. 
let's integrate people and trees into our scene. We'll revisit the basic Blender commands introduced at the video's start. Let's group these objects using the M shortcut. Remember to check the snap mode in the top tab. During placement, we may need to snap to surfaces or edges, depending on the situation. Seated figures will illustrate the area's function. People photographing and strolling around will showcase the structure's purpose. Each pavilion structure serves a specific purpose. The scene looks good now. When we first opened Blender, there was a camera in our scene. Now we'll use the Control alt 0 shortcut to make that camera capture the view in the active window. Perfect. Ensure the render engine is set to cycles. A quality setting of 512 is sufficient. Let's adjust the dimensions of our render image. We'll set it to 1500 by 1500 pixels. Now let's switch the camera to orthographic mode. We can fine tune all camera settings from this tab. It looks great now. Now let's add a background. We'll do this by adding a plane and applying a texture to it, copying it directly from another file. After placing it in the scene, we'll check if the ground is positioned correctly by switching to the top view and adjusting if necessary. If half of the plane isn't visible on screen, the camera might be cutting it off. Let's adjust the camera settings accordingly. Group the pavilion structures by selecting them one by one using the M shortcut. Let's switch to the render view to check the lighting. To enhance the physical model effect, 
we'll add a key high dynamic range image for environmental lighting. We can do this by selecting it from our PC under the environment texture in the right tab. To change the light direction, switch to the Shading tab and select the World option. Add mapping and texture coordinate nodes by pressing Shift-A, connect them, and then rotate the light on the Z-axis. Perfect. It's looking good now. This angle looks great. We can also fine tune the light intensity using the node here. Perfect. It's looking good now. Let's add a color material to the stairs using the right tab. We can do this by clicking the plus sign and selecting new. Now let's adjust the default white color to various shades of gray. Perfect. It's looking good now. If it looks good and the scene and lighting are ready, let's render the image by clicking the render image option in the top left. This process will take some time. Remember to save the rendered image once it's complete. And that's it. We've reached the end of the tutorial. You can find all the content used in this tutorial in the link in the description box below. Feel free to use it in your own visualizations. If you're interested in learning more detailed terrain modeling from DRG drawings and scene setup in Blender, check out the course video linked in the description box. See you in the next tutorial.